Welcome back everyone, Nick and Lex here. Thank you so much for joining me today to Music with Nick. Super excited, we got a marathon lined up today by Jeff. And I wanted to say thank you to Jeff for sponsoring this video and the marathon and the whole idea behind it. Thank you so much. So um, also, all you fans out there of the Rascals, the Young Rascals, I know they're the same band. Jeff was kind enough to explain that to me. Um, we're going to do some, you know, um, we're going to get down and dirty, like they say. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but there's some um, some nice uh, um, information here about the, uh, about the band. And um, I wanted to read, uh, let's see here, what... Um, what Jeff provided. So it says here, the Rascals started their career as a young, as the young Rascals. Um, don't be confused. They're one and the same. In my opinion, one of the most underrated and overlooked American bands in the mid to late sixties. They had hit after hit on the radio, much like the Beatles. Their peers did not overlook them. The Rascals were selected through the rock and roll hall of fame in 19. 97 i mean that is already you know if you're in there you pretty much like immortalized i mean i guess just by recording an album you'd pretty much do that but then we have nrbq the new rhythm blues quartet never gained great nor uh, notoriety but everybody who hears them loves them they're called the greatest bar band this is your this is your grab your girl and get out on that dance floor music great fun live band so we're gonna start it off thank you so much we're gonna start it off with nrbq this is rc cola and moon pie this is a youtube link we're gonna um play so excuse us if the um uh quality is not the best you know it's still i mean it doesn't really matter at the end of the day sometimes you even love that crackle you know in the audio it just gives it you know a little bit more of a i don't know of a classic vibe so um it says here we're gonna start it off with love is beautiful love is a beautiful thing released in 68 then we're gonna do come on up released in 66 how can i be sure in 67 and good lovin in 1966 um the, these are all um it says here oh uh, timepiece the rascal greatest hits which i which i got um uh, loaded right here and um uh, yeah th and uh, that's it uh, thank you so so much uh um jeffrey for this request all you new fans out there of the 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 rascals or the young rascals um, uh, give this video a like, of course, if you like it, you know, subscribe to the channel if you find it entertaining. I do appreciate it so much. So without further ado, let's get into the music. Let's enjoy and uh, let's have some fun. I'll be right back. Alrighty, Dan, uh, let's get it started. Here we have the link to the YouTube, um, to the RC Cola and Moon Pie. Here we go. NRBQ. Awesome, let's go.
this is wonderful. Um, my my dad. Um, from the few, you know, um, real fun. I think like uh, sit downs we had. You know, in our short. Um, I don't know, like relationship as father and son. You know, when we would sit down and talk about stuff. So I one thing that I know, um, is that he was a a huge fan of rock and roll and that he would also, and he was a great dancer. He was a great dancer and he would compete and stuff. And he was into all that stuff. So that is so fun. It's, I can almost like imagine him, you know, dancing to that, I guess, older stuff, you know, he was born, um, uh, I think, uh, 38, so when rock and roll came around, he was already, you know, like, oh my God, I guess in his 20s, mid 20s. So that was his mu mu music. And um, also yeah, after that, of course, jazz. And so he was never really into rock, which is, you know, um, I guess I understand uh, people, you know, of that age, I guess it's just a different generation. He was more into, and also his jazz was very cool jazz, gypsy jazz and stuff like that. Never, I try to get him into like jazz fusion, but no, he wouldn't like, he wouldn't go for it. It was too much rock in there already. But yeah, this is a lot of fun. Um, thank you so much for this. This is really cool. Um, I'm not much of a dancer. I'm not, I don't suck. You know, I do dance. And I'm I'm not afraid to, and I do, you know. Alexia and I we always dance when when there's a dancing platform or, or or dance floor. We always dance, and we always have a lot of fun. So this would be a fun thing to try out. So it's really cool. I, I'm loving the sound. cool yeah i can totally see him and um yeah those were like you know conversations it was and i don't even blame him you know i, I can't say he was like this horrible father figure because but he was already like what are you gonna do in your 50s with a newborn and pretty much you know and then once i was like in my teens he was already in his 60s you know so I get it, you know, it's like, I guess it's too much of a time difference, um, you know, there's people that have their kids in their 20s and in their 30s and, you know, they're still, they're still kids themselves, you know, it's much easier, so he was already an old man, I was the, the last, you know, I was the last, um, I guess, you know, so, yeah, it's all good, you know, I, I have no bad feelings about that it was just like i have no memories of ever doing anything fun with my dad you know apart from like maybe two three things where i was happy to be there you know but there was no real playing or you know i don't know it's just like it is what it is but i had an, an amazing mother and she's still amazing and um i love her to death and i love my father too and i respect him but it's just like I guess it's just not what I, I had no idea, but now looking back, I, I, there, there's such great father figures, like one of my best friends, Tobias, and he just like does everything for his kids, but he also had them fairly early and he's still very young, you know, and they're, uh, you know, so I guess, I don't know. I don't know. You, you tell me if you have kids, uh, if, did, did you ever have kids and you maybe, um, you late forties, uh, mid fifties, and uh, what did you do? You know, did you have? Because then you're more like you're the dad, but you're playing the role like it's you're almost like the granddad. So, yeah. So, um, okay. So now we're gonna switch over to the rascals. Um, 
This is Love is a Beautiful Thing. And uh, th th these four songs are all like, like, um, like uh, I got instructed to do. They're all from the same uh, album. And um, let's, let's, let's go here. Thank you again so much, Jeffrey, for this. Um, this is a lot of fun. These are all very short. I kind of like, I'm hesitant to interrupt these but i see that they're warner brothers so i think we're fine i don't think we're gonna get blocked or anything so i'm just gonna listen to them and then at the end talk about the uh the song what i loved about this rock and roll one was the piano solo and just the good feel you know just a good vibe you know just like great music you know this this rock and roll um you know, almost, I don't know if it, you would call it rock and roll. I think it's rock and roll, but it's not hard rock. It's just rock and roll, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> so let's go with, with love is a beautiful thing. Let's go. Those fade outs. <laughs> oh man, just when it gets really good, it's just like, okay, better repeat that stuff, you know. Um, but I, I know, I know the gimmick, I know why uh, it needed it only had a certain amount of time on the radio. Great stuff, great piano, uh like great like organ solo there. Really like I felt for a second there that was as oh, this is what inspired Deep Purple, you know. Um <laughs> But it, great stuff. I love the chorus. Really catchy. Love is a beautiful thing. Boom, boom, boom. Um, uh, just like, yeah, I, I wish they, they would make longer versions. I'm sure if you listen to these guys play these live, they just go on and on. Um, improv and all that stuff. But great sound. Great stuff. I can see um, why they were respected, you know, by their peers and why they're in the, uh, the, in the Hall of Fame. You know, that's awesome. Um, we're going to play, uh, come on up, um, from the same album. Also very short, but let's get into it. Let's see. Um, maybe you guys are like dancing along, you know, by listening to me. So that's awesome. Let's go. Come on. 
guys are really heavy man i mean for that time you know um 60s like late 60s i mean yes that's when we got you know led zeppelin and then deep purple came out you know in 72 i think oh that's when they really like hit hard um we had sabbath but this is i like this is a little bit more commercial but they are they have their organ they have their distortion um there have backing vocals it's it sounds very complete i love it it's very good um i wonder what these guys sound like live um but i'll i'll i'll, I'll look them up um very good so far so good really cool songs short and sweet you know perfect for the radio you know to blast to blast through and then or buy them on these like little you know lps and just have them on repeat and, you know, like, this is great stuff. This is good music. Um, okay, next one uh, is How Can I Be Sure? Um, also very short, but, you know, I mean, they really have their formula down. Really great stuff. Great improv. Great solos, like, for even for the time um, when the guitar was not, so like, the main instrument. I guess, you know, the sax was still very dominant, I guess, in the 60s. Well, I guess maybe in the fit. I don't know. Sometimes I just, you know, um, I think in the 60s it was pretty dominant. Um, but um, let's get, let's continue with how can I be sure? Um, let's go. How can I be sure in a world? That's constantly changing How can I be sure Where I stand with you Whenever I Whenever I'm away from you I want to die Cause you know I want to stay Touch me, but don't take me down Whenever I, whenever I'm away from you My alibi is telling people I don't care for you Maybe I'm just hanging around with my head Upside down, it's a pity I can't seem to find someone who's as pretty and lovely as you How can I be sure? I really, really, really want to know different how can i be sure in a world that's constantly changing how can i be sure i'll be sure with you 
Wow, this was amazing. I was going to say the F word, but this was so different from their other stuff. This was a complete different setup. Um, I love the singing was a lot, of course, a lot softer here, but I love like all the different instruments they had, you know, they had the, the string section, they had the horn section and the way they orchestrated this whole thing. It reminded me a little bit of Moody Blues, you know, um, not as crazy like Days of Future Past is like insane, but but it had a beautiful, um, you know, trumpet, like the chords and stuff and the strings were very, very well um, orchestrated. Um, so it sounded more like way earlier, you know, in time, it just sounded not as heavy. And I think that was great, great. Um, I don't know. Just like I, and I love that um, that you decided to put it in the middle, you know, just like to kind of like cool off and get a different perspective from the band. Very cool. I love this. I think this is my favorite so far because it it did end as well. You know, it had a beginning. It had like this whole stuff in the middle, this this orchestration, and then it did end. It wasn't a fade out. Fade outs are, I do like them, but. I can live without them, you know. I love when a song ends. Um, I don't know. And and yet many of my favorite bands have fade outs, you know. So, But yeah, just in this setting here, when it's a short song, I love that there's an end. Um, so this was cool. This was really, really different. Let's see. We're going to do Good Lovin'. Uh, let's see if, they're, if this is also from their earlier stuff. It just sounds earlier. I could be, I could be wrong. But um, let's check it out. Good lovin'. One, two, three. Good love. Good love. Good love. Good love. I was feeling so bad. I asked my family doctor just what I had. cool very you know fast paced i love that it had like a little bit of the la bamba dun, 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 the chord changes are very fast and it's just very <clears throat> rock and roll and uh, again perfect for dancing you know um and uh really really just feel good music this is just music that 
I don't know. It's just it touches your soul. It makes you happy. Um, I'm I'm really really happy <laughs> about this, Jeffrey. Thank you so much. And um, I j I see that we're really really on the short side. Um, of course because of these songs are very very short. Uh, we're gonna do another. Uh, I would say let's do another R um uh, N R B Q song. Um, uh, I've chosen here. Um. That's neat. That's nice. And this is uh, at the Yankee Stadium. Just let's see what year this is. In 78. And this is a little longer. So um, let's let's listen to, to a little bit more of NRBQ. And uh, I guess, yeah, the marathon is not the longest. You know, these songs are very short. And also there's not too much to talk about because... The songs are very simple in structure, you know, and uh, so you can't really get into the whole like, oh, what, what, what are they doing here and what are they doing there? It's just good stuff, you know. That's uh, I'm not gonna try and like decipher what they were doing because it's pretty much just the, you know the same in in every song. Uh, but the one, the how can I be sure? That was totally different. That was a totally different setup. Totally different band members. Really, really cool. Different style of singing. I love that. But yeah, uh, so let's go with uh, That's Neat, That's Nice. Um, here we go. Shut your eyes Can you tell that's still alive Would you pay that price That's nice Can you spell your name Do you think that it's all a game Or would you if you could oh, That's good Cool. Very, um, you know, 
Um, this one felt more jazzy because of the improvisation. You know, we have the sax. I think that was a trombone, but I could be wrong. I don't know. I think it wasn't a trumpet. It was a trombone. And then the guitar um, felt so like, I guess back in the day, you know, without the distortion, maybe it wasn't, um, you know, I guess you couldn't just like come in with the with full distortion, but there was no like distortion that heavy to be louder. So that's why I say the guitar was still like in the back front. And when somebody would take a guitar solo, it wasn't like today, you know, where you like basically just like take over the entire thing. You're louder than everybody else. Um, playing a lead guitar solo, but I love the the way he was improvising. And he even like added some jazzy notes in there. Um, uh, I guess because he was, you know, playing with jazz players. Um, so that was really interesting. And it was just a fun, a fun tune. Uh, all in all, really cool, really cool. Um, another side from this band, I think this is uh, not so rock and roll. It was more like, oh, man, I don't even know. I guess like bebop or, or stuff, you know, like it, it it felt more like, yeah, a little more, a little bit more ja on the jazzy side, but really cool. So we did six songs. We're still a, a bit short, but um, that's just you know the way it goes. You know, um, you provide me with the music, and you know, um, I'm I'm sorry that it's on the short side, but it was a lot of fun, and um. Sometimes you provide me with five songs and I make an hour out of it. But sometimes, you know, I just, uh, I can't because there's just not um, uh, that much material, you know. So, um, but I think this was a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Jeffrey, for this. And I hope everybody enjoyed as much as I did. And let me know what you think, you know. Um, should we do more rock and roll marathons? Do you want a number two? Um, um, but yeah, let me know. This was a lot of fun for me. This is like, I can imagine people having so much fun playing this, dancing to this. And even though it's not, you know, a heavy metal or progressive rock or, you know, jazz fusion, I, that's the beauty of, um, music that I guess at this stage in my life, I can appreciate, appreciate almost like everything, you know, and find something good and out of it and you know grab the guitar and do something with it because these chord progressions are difficult you know the, the ones they're doing um so there's always something nice to pick up you know and it's always good as a musician to know the the most amount of styles possible like they're, they're gonna ask you like okay um let's play some you know some rock and then okay let's let's play some rock and roll or let's play some you know blues and uh, it's always nice you know to be able to just do you know um that you know so i guess by listening to different styles you pick up a lot you know especially like our generation you know that pretty much the music that comes out is all garbage unfortunately not all of it but most of the stuff that's on the radio it's just like i guess i don't know right now excuse me um the music producers in the world um are just like at the wrong place i guess or at the wrong like i don't know they think that what sells is this specific like garbage that's being played and it's just so sad but it's really um and they think uh, because of their metrics and whatever they use, you know, to make, um, they think that that's what people like. And I think if people would get um, uh, exposed to different music, even now, you know, there's bands right now that play this kind of music, but they're not being boosted in the charts or they're not being played on the radio, on the popular radio stations. Like everything that gets played is like, this garbage music and uh 
and that's just i guess that's why people like it you know because it gets played because it's hip and and uh it's what what's right now trending and uh, i guess if the music producers or the people behind the scenes would actually push music like this or even rock or metal or just or jazz forward more then i'm sure that kids would be like hey i like this you know this is actually very good uh but no you know they only get fed you know this garbage that we hear unfortunately i never listened to radio i just i changed to like kuvo jazz this is an amazing that is an amazing jazz uh, station here in Denver, and we've even been there. We donate to that um, radio station. They're amazing, and they only play like literally old, old stuff all day. It's just wonderful. But you know, then you switch to like a radio station that everybody listens to, and it's all this crap. So I guess it's just like the wrong management right now. I hope it turns around eventually. You know, in five to ten years, who knows? Maybe. I want another 60s and 70s and 80s era, you know, even the 90s were great, but I don't know, it's just something going on in the music industry, and I don't know why they're selling this garbage, this auto-tune crap and mumble rap, and I have nothing against rap, I think rap is fantastic, but this mumble, this, this nonsensical, like, it doesn't even rhyme anymore, it's just garbage, so... I hope it turns around like I, I wish to see, um, you know, this music coming back, you know, and there's some bands, you know, um, like Greta Van Fleet, which I would like to cover soon. And they're literally doing like their Zeppelin thing, you know, and it's 2023 and they release albums. They literally sound like Led Zeppelin, which is awesome. And people criticize them because they sound like Led Zeppelin. But I think, hey, go ahead, do it, you know, because more people would are going to start liking that kind of sound and people are going to there's going to be more bands trying to emulate that sound and then maybe one day we have a hundred bands sounding like that you know so i hope i hope it happens so uh again jeffrey thank you so much for this um for this fun marathon i hope you did enjoy everyone in the comment section let me know what you think and i hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see each other in the next one take care